Peace and prosperity be unto all who's listening and watching. It's your girl, Shay Miller, right? And I'm back with another video. And I know there's a lot going on in the world. And, you know, please be lifted in this moment of time. Please, if you're someone who's black, um, please don't be down in spirit. Please don't give up. Our ancestors wasn't about giving up. They didn't give up and they had less to fight with. We have more than what they've ever had to ever fight with. So let me tell you. You better stand strong and you better hold on and you better keep fighting because this is a ongoing thing because we have generations to come who's going to need our strength for the things in which we can accomplish for them for the for the era ahead. It's not just for us. It's for our generations to come. So when you think about the things that needs to be done in a society today, you better know it's not only for us. When you think about retribution, when you think about the oppression, systematic oppression that has been killing us mentally, physically, spiritually, and has damaged us as a people, that has messed us up economically, educationally, verbally, physically, these things have messed us up as a people and there's no coming back from that mental 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 place where we are so conditioned by a world of hate a world that hates us for our skin we did not ask to be born of black ethnics we didn't ask to be born of melanin but we are so, for my people out there, I want you to stay strong and stand true. Today, I want to talk to you about how abandonment has affected us and why it's such a big issue in society, but mostly in the black community. Well, abandonment from since the age of slavery. So, we can go back. Because... The 400 years ended January 1st, and now everything has took a, took its course, has gone gone off. But not that's not the point. So, yeah. Since the age of slavery, since slavery was around, and slavery still exists, whether it's physically or mentally, oppression is still like a form of slavery and it still keeps us from thriving striving and being successful and prosperous as a people so even back then our men were taking from us our men were ripped apart from their families their children their wives and if they were able to get married they had conditions master raped the women creating mixed complexion children um taking away the men and killing them separating men and women from children making the women most predominantly strong because they will take away the men strip away everything that makes a man a man um abuse a man rip a man from his family Abuse and abandonment started so early in our lives, in our history. It started with men being taken from us, our, our children being taken from us. If any person who spoke out was to say anything, we lost somebody, but mostly our men. They found more ways to separate us or make us slave. Even a marriage certificate, even to this day, uh, marriage certificates were a way of trapping a man, right? Or trapping a woman to a man. And it's kind of like a form of slavery. Marriage certificates, I would not suggest people get married by court because... If you look into that, it's also still like back then, slave policy. 
you're basically when you marry a man in this society in this generation since the uh, marriage way has not changed really you're basically being slow like you're basically considered a piece of property and when you marry to a man you become his property Basically, I I know most people are not looking at it and birth certificates make us slaves because you cannot, without that identification, without a social security, without these, these two things making us, um, without these two things inside society, it's like you won't, you won't be important. You won't exist, but with them, they have control they have control of your life. I know people who don't have a certificate. You have a birth certificate that is given to you. And then you have a certificate that you can go get and change from using the certificate that are given. Because the certificates in birth and sick and um, social security numbers are used to enslave you. Because if you forever use what the government has given you. If you forever use what... Uh, law enforcement has uh, given you will forever be a slave to society's ways there is many ways of enslavement or oppression amongst our people not only in systems but in marriage and uh, birth certificates and social securities and for a very long time, our people cannot thrive because there's many ways. And I don't believe people even take time to educate themselves into knowing that these things are going on. Think about it is abandonment affects us in such a traumatic way. Even in this. So we talked about when... Um, slavery was around and they would take our men and they would um find different ways to make a profit off of marriage or enslave a woman to a man you know making sure that the man the black man never can rise up making sure that the woman is always the strong or she's isolated from the man so now we're at this point in society where there's always been interracial relationships since before time. I mean, like, for the longest of time. So, interracial relationships has been around for a very long time. And I've seen this on on the social media. It said, this one guy, he said, I don't allow my um, children to date outside their race. And that's a, that's a standard. I honestly... With being a intellectual and an open-minded intellectual, I am not racist whatsoever. I am going to be honest. That is a matter of standard and a matter of perspective. Because everything requires perspective. So the man said he did not allow his children to date outside of their race. But he said, when it comes to friends, I didn't care what kind of people my children hanged around. And... He also went on further to say that if God was to create, if God didn't want the black man to be with the black woman or the white woman to be with the white woman or the Hispanic woman to be with the Hispanic man, he would not create the two. And look, now that in its own terms, that makes sense. Yes, that was a white man speaking. Does that sound ignorant? No, it doesn't. And that really is a matter of perspective. And you have to be open-minded to seeing that because it really makes sense. But like I said, I've dated, I've dated white people, white men growing up, white guys. I've dated outside of my race. So when I say that, it really truly is a matter of shift in your mind, a matter of perspective. Though love is love. No matter if it's interracial, black on black, white on white, uh, Hispanic, uh, Hispanics, you know, love is love. But when you think about that concept and you really, you want to think about where did things go wrong in society? Where did things go wrong? And why are we so punished? 
Now, to this day, we still have strong roots of abandonment and how it has affected us mentally. Well, our fathers either choose to abandon us or they be ripped away from us by a system that unjustifiably wronged them by false accusing them to do something in which they may have never done or that they did do so black people being more likely to be accused for something that they did not do or locked away for something that they did do because this is the way the black man sees providing even the young boy with with the lack of a father in the absence of him not being there has no guidance and now has to find a way to be a man so this is the way based on the environment that we're in how we see making a way is because there is no no greatness surrounding the black people and when i say that we have always been placed in a position of not thriving i'm not saying we can't thrive because we can i assure you this oppression is done with okay i'm not saying we can't thrive what i'm saying is for the longest of times we've been placed in positions and conditions and and obstacles that had made us only live in such a a one-minded perspectives that all we see is all we can have all that it is is all we can be and there has never been true examples in the black community there's never been anybody who stood it's been a few people who went out who became successful but once they became successful they became sellouts for the longest time black people have been selling out to each other and if you don't like me, whether you're black or anything, you don't believe that black people sell each other out. The first slave owner was a black person. The first one to sell black slaves was a black person. So let me tell you, this is why it's hard to trust even our own people. Because black people get a sense of fortune, a sense of money, a sense of wealth. And they will forget where the heck they come from. Because when you have money, you have no problems. Economically, uh, not being educated, systematical oppression does not affect you. Somebody writing nigger on a wall would not bother you. Because you have the financial stabilities and the fundamental uh, capacity to rise above it. But when you live in a minority majority and a environment where there is nothing to thrive from or see growth uh where there is gang violence and there's like liquor stores and there's not anything productive in your community and everything that is productive has always been destroyed and that your history is never truly taught in schools and that you are deprived of true education you're not taught anything in schools that really would educate you to be a, a a decent adult in society so now you, you go to school you're not really learning anything you go to school in high school all these different grades to learn nothing then you go to college and you may or may not get a job when you graduate society has fucked the black people to a point where or just people in general but mainly the black people and the minorities to the point where there is no way of thriving, right? They say they they make Muslims seem like they're all terrorists. If you're Mexican, they consider you to be an alien. If you're black, you're a criminal. If you're <laughs> they even treat the Amish different. They treat everybody who is not like them different. And they they outcast us all but we're all in the same boat when it comes to the mistreatment of the society in which we live because we are all in that same boat of mistreatment now when it comes to the lives of black people we have always been 
killed for no reason at all. And there is no justification for any of it. There's no justification that can ever define or justify or politically argumize or anything that anybody anybody can find or come up with there's nothing in the constitution there is nothing in the law there is nothing that can justify cops killing people without reasons and not giving people the um was it to, until proven guilty as it said i'm i'm innocent until proven guilty like, we don't get that opportunity. Our black men don't get the chance to come home and be with their families. Like I said, this started from a very early on in slavery, and it still has worked its way up until modern society. We are a very advanced people compared to how those people before once were. But though we're very advanced, we're still very oppressed. And though we have come a long way... We need we have a long way to go, okay? We are not excluded from the rise of the nation. We are going to rise as a people. So when I speak about abandonment, I speak solely and thoroughly on those who are purposely killed and have no no example left in their lives. Our, our fathers and brothers, sons, daughters, women die by, by the killing of cops, being locked up without reason or cause. I've seen white people do the same crimes. A man, a white man can go in the pen. He can rape a woman, get six months. But if a black man wrongly get accused for raping a woman because she intends to lie like Emmett Till. Like Emmett Till, a white woman opens her mouth, uses her right white privilege to lie on a black man, wrongfully lie on a black man, taking his life, brutalizing a black man with her very words. Because a white man can be said that he's a rapist and he can get six months. A black man can be wrongly accused and said that he's a rapist and get his life. His life. And not proven wrong. Not proven right until it's too late. After he spent most of his entire life away from his family. And after he spent most of his life dying in a cell. Losing his mind for something he did not do. People get locked up for lo killing animals for longer time than they get locked up for killing people. There's no justification of how American Constitution doesn't stand for laudering of people, yet laudering of you. We can talk about everything, but one thing for sure, we're not going to keep talking about black people as if they're a problem because we're not a problem. Everybody else is the problem if white people can protest about haircuts and not die if white people can protest about games being winning a game or losing a game and not dying if white people can protest about their just being mad about something that is just stupid that is just stupid. We're protesting about the lives and deaths of our people, yet you protest about games and haircuts and things that don't matter. Men material things in which you can gain back over time. The life of people cannot be revived. After our people are dead and gone, that mentally messes us up. There has not been justice for our people for a very long time. And we need justice. We need equality. We need better. We need a better future. We need better people. We need people like the president. We need people like the judges. We need people like the cops. We need people who are congressmen and people who are above 
who speak about who are said to be qualified for certain roles and positions to be held to a higher standard. If we are held to a high standard as people of this society, of this America, of this place, of this world, if we are held to a high standard, those above us who run the country, who run the office, who run and make laws and constitutions, who put forth prisoners and people away bad or good lawyers people who need to be held accountable these people who say that they are qualified need to have been held to the highest of standard yes soldiers are held at a higher standard than these people a soldier disobey order he get honorable discharge we need people to be Ahead accountable in the society in which we live, and we need our presidents to be held accountable. We need our judges to be held accountable. We need our these cops to be held accountable. It's not just a few; it's all. And we can't if we don't get all of them held accountable, because it is the whole system. It is not half the system. It's not just cops. It's everybody everybody is in alignment of each other and there's some part of the domino that needs to lie in effect the domino fell from one end and not down all the way we are all connected and we are all in this domino effect together so when you realize when you make wiser decisions on this chess board because we are just pawns in this life what you stand for is what you stand for. Whether you agree with me, I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't care. But one thing for sure is for the longest of time, we've been oppressed. We've been abused. We've been killed. We've been hung. We've been misused. We've been uneducated. We've been unable to purchase homes based on our color, our ethnicity. I didn't say that right, but that's okay. We have not been taught about credit or financial education. We have been deprived to strive or thrive in this society. And it has taken us a long time to get to the place where we are. And we are tired and we are fed up and we are angry. And we've seen too many of our people be lost to this very system that is said to protect us. Now, though Abraham Lincoln did not necessarily meant to free us completely because it's obvious he didn't intend to free us completely from slavery not mental slavery not physical not you know you know not systematic oppression and slavery in that manner he just simply wanted to do that he had his own reasons is written if you want to look it up you definitely need to look up abraham lincoln and him freeing the slaves and him signing that paper and the fact that our lives have always been like the fact that jobs still even pay in cents it's the same thing they pay back in slave times when slaves would work fields you would get your your percentage based on some change the fact that we as people have not seen that plantations and um uh, like places like uh chicken plants and place place if you don't see that as a some sort of field but in a advanced manner that is a production field meant to enslave you keep you from being entrepreneurs or people who are uh, evolve beyond systematic oppression keeping you doing the same thing never ever thinking to pursue or achieve your own ideas the world we live in has isolated us caged us but we are not voiceless we are open to speak and it really has the abandonment of our fathers the abandonment of uh, the mothers being killed and taken from their children. The fact that that man, George Floyd, had died the way that he died. 
and that he has a little daughter that would never see him. She will be totally messed up by it. The effects of our people leaving us in the traumatic way that they do. Grief is a whole nother um, thing for us to deal with. And how we grieve, there is nobody who can say how black people should grieve. And if you're an ally and you stand with us, it's not your place to tell us how we should grieve, how we should go about justice, how we should go about uh, protesting. And we protest peacefully. We protest peacefully. A football player lost his job because he protested during the national anthem. We protest peacefully for the very rights in which soldiers are fighting for that fought for our ancestors our ancestors fought for for so long we do it right we're always made look like the bad guy there's always somebody trying to make us look bad but no matter what black people get the blame of everything but let me tell you it's not us destroying and burning buildings it's not us randomly killing cops for no reason. It's not us tear gassing and spraying and shooting rubber bullets at each other. That's them. It's not us. It's them. So the fact that people can even think that it is okay. Do not stand in the way of injustice. If you're not a part of the cause, if you're not seeing the problem, if you're not for it, don't speak about it. Because simply it comes to the point where you're going to be on the right side of history or you're going to be on the wrong side of history. If you plan to be on the wrong side of history, you better hope. You better hope that you got some strong history, some strong, something strong with you because being on the wrong side why the good side is rising again, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. So you can stay in your, your one-minded perspective that allows you only to see what is you can see because, because you have not experienced the black, the blackness that we experience. The fact that we can't all day long be ourselves. We can't all day all long be black. Because there's environments in which we have to be different. Our hair, we have to condition it. We have to put it back. Oh, you need to cut your hair. Well, the basketball player with the dress, they cut his hair off to say that he could not play. I don't see them cutting your hair off and saying that you can't play a sport. But I see that you can protest peacefully about haircuts and not get killed. What I don't understand is how people with so much privilege. And it's not a matter of not seeing color. Because it, in a sense it is. And I'd much rather you see color. I'd much rather you see that I am different than you. I'd much rather you see my people are different than you. Than you just say that you don't see color. Yes, love is love no matter what. But let me tell you. We are different. And we're nothing like you. And we don't, we're not born with that privilege. We're not born with privilege at all. And though I am like complexion, they, we, I, we're said to have privilege as well, but I am not privileged. I have not experienced privilege. I've been arrested like most people. I've gotten in trouble. I stayed in a lot of trouble because in my younger youth, let me tell you, there is no such thing as privilege for black people. And even if, it opens doors for some people. It's not for everybody. And that's just certain places in this world that allows light skin privilege to go on. So let me tell you, if you're somebody who is so stick so stuck on your way, you can't see the problem with the society and why we are at this point, and you're voicing your opinion because you're not a voicing facts. You say one thing about opinions and there's another thing about facts. When you don't voice facts, when you voice your opinion, we don't voice some statement that justifies your reason or why you said what you said. 
when you have no proof, you're just ignorant. You're just acting out of stupidity and you're wasting your time because no one has the energy nor is it the obligation of us to sympathize with you or feel some kind of way for speaking our truth. Our truth is our truth and no one can silence us. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing. You guys don't want us to speak up. See, like, you see, some of you guys actually see the problem. But when we talk about the problem, you get offended by it. What's the point? You see the problem, but you're offended by it. If you're more privileged than another person, then you can use that very privilege to help people. So, my best advice to you guys is this. Abandonment has affected us all, but mostly the black community. We have been, our people have been killed in many aspects. We rise up in any aspect of society, whether it's the ju judicial systems or becoming lawyers or becoming doctors, becoming this or that. We never get the recognition that we deserve. We never get the credit that we deserve. If we created so many things and it's always given to white people. We're never given the true recognition for the things that we create and that we do. And we create a lot of things. So for people to even feel the obligation to speak on a matter that is not, in, that is not important to them. If it's not important to you, don't speak about it. You're wasting your time, your energy, and your breath. If it's not purposeful to you, why speak about it? You're wasting your time and your energy. Don't focus on us. Focus on you, if that's the case. And if you're going to be a part of the wrong part of history, you stay on that part of history. And you make sure that when you make that decision and you are you end up like everybody that has mistreated us, just know it's your fault that you end up like that. Because time for retribution is now. Our time is now. So if you stand in the way, you are done. So though I don't promote violence, I do believe that we have too many Martin Luther Kings in the society. I do believe in Malcolm X. What? What? Is there a problem? I do believe in Malcolm X. We don't have enough Malcolm X's in the society. So let me tell you, we don't have enough Black Panthers in the society. So let me tell you, it won't go down like that. And we're nothing like our ancestors. So when it comes down to what's real, when it comes down to being an intellectual, an individual who's all about solving problems, my people will strive and thrive and rise above this. This may have been a strike for us, but we would not fall short. Love you guys. And I hope you guys have a prosperous day. And know that even though our spirits have been low and things have been up against us, that, st that still doesn't give you a reason to give up. So don't give up on yourself ever. Love you guys.